Hilo. We're on the big island of the uh, state of Hawaii and we're featuring some awesome cars. We've actually been featuring a lot of Toyotas. We're here to shoot uh, the Tacoma launch and since we're here, I figured we might as well check out some of the local shops, some of the local builds. But um, this is probably one of the craziest, if not craziest Toyota Corollas I've ever seen. So Brendan yep. from PSI Racing, you actually built this. Correct. And <clears throat> I don't really know what to say. I kind of feel like this is a handful. <laughs> this is, um, <laughs> This is a lot. So then, I guess this begs the question, what did this start life as? We actually purchased the car the way you see it built, minus engine. So we put together the motor, it's a 3TC. It actually has a billet stroker crankshaft in it as well. So it's stroked up to about two liter. Originally it's 1800 cc. Has a custom uh, billet head on it as well, which you don't see very often. What year is this? Uh, 71. 71. KE20. Yep. Yep. Toyota Corolla. Corolla. But is it is there like a nickname for this kind they of They call these uh peanuts for some reason. I don't know why that took off with this actual body style. So you have this body style, then you have the TE27 body style, which is kind of the coupe. But for some reason, draggers, drag racing guys love this body style. You won't see the TE27 body style. Is there like a difference? Oh, same wheelbase, same car, just the, the back, the curvature. The T27 actually looks sportier, to be honest with you. But for some reason, they this is like the most popular body style when it comes to drag racing. Do you think it could be faster? Nah. Potentially, or? No? Nah, same thing. Same, same thing? Same thing, yeah. Huh. Yeah. It's not like this is your, you know, cream of the crop drag car. But when you make the right power and you have the right combination as far as chassis setup, you know, everything in the car is, it's got a four nine inch rear end, 40 spline axles, like it's majorly overkill for what we're doing with it. But that way, you know, you have no problems when you're going down the racetrack and safety is number one as well, you know. So let's talk, talk a little bit about why it's here. Okay. Why is it here on the big island? Well, they probably run, their drag organization is probably the most uh, how would you say it? I wouldn't say popular, but they're, they run all the time, basically twice a month. So Billy uh, reached out to me that he wanted to build a car. I actually found this car in Florida. And then you're actually from Florida. I'm from Florida. And yeah. your local racetrack is what? Cletus uh, runs on? Yeah. We either race Bradenton or we race Orlando Speed World. Got it. Yep. Okay. So we found the car in Orlando, actually, and I told him about it. We purchased the vehicle. We brought it back to my shop. And then from there, I basically built the car up, got it running, dynoed, and away it came over to Hawaii. And there's something really special about these cars. The Hawaiians, for whatever reason, they love these so yes. much. And yes. they're modified so many different ways. You know, I've seen so many show cars, and I've actually, now that I've come to Big Island, I've seen a bunch of these nice classic Toyota drag cars. Yep. And this one, without a doubt, is the craziest one I've seen. Yeah. Uh, so. Like, how did you guys start in Florida building these things? Oh God, we've been doing, I've been doing this since about 1995, 94. I actually used to have a 82 Starlet that I used to drive to high school. And it had a carbureted turbo version of this. And uh, I just kind of got sucked into it from there. You know, I'm Puerto Rican, so the Puerto Rican culture is huge when it comes to a lot of Toyotas as well, just like the Hawaiians. Mm. And you know, I started working on cars and not going to school and just porting heads in my parents' garage and from there it just took off. Why is it that you guys embrace these? Is it because these were just like everyday driver cars, everyday pedestrian vehicles that you wanted a hot rod? There. I don't know if you've ever been to Puerto Rico, but if you travel to Puerto Rico, you'll see, you know, a regular house and you'll see a full blown, you know, $100,000 drag car sitting in front of it. You know, like they, their heart and soul is just, Toyota drag cars. I really don't know why it catapulted so far in Puerto Rico, but uh, even here you see Tacomas and all kinds of Toyotas just driving around. It's just, it, I don't know, it's just a brand that people love basically. You know, mm -hmm. I love Toyota. All I do is Toyota. I used to venture into like Mitsubishi and stuff like that and eventually I just got away from it all. And this is, this is my little niche. What is the whole point with using this motor? Because this actually didn't come with this 
3TC, right? Well, this actual car did not come with it, but some of, there was a version of this car that did come with a 2TC, the 1600. So the beauty of this car is that it actually has a combination that is consistent with the car. Got it. You know and what then I mean? My question is, I understand that you probably want to keep it authentic in that it's still a Toyota engine yep. from that era. Right. But why this motor? Like, isn't there so many other things that you could do? Like you could do an updated Toyota inline four motor? Yeah, there is, but it's just, that's the beauty of this car and its combination is that it's consistent. Like the heritage of the vehicle is consistent with the motor. So that just gives it that much more of a, you know, a quality that people can appreciate, you know? Inherently, this is not a very good design. Well, it or... actually was pretty good, believe it or not. It's a Hemi style motor. And for the era, this is probably one of the best engines Toyota ever made. But it's not like you're sticking with it now because it's such a good design and you can make really big power from no, it. Th this, is, this is pretty much bragging rights is what this is. You know, so it's basically to, you know, challenge us to see how far we can get with this combination and the car, because it is that difficult to make this as fast as we would want it, you know? Okay, so now it is not 1.8 liter, it's two liter. Yeah, it's what a custom crankshaft that we do. So the, the block is actually original, factory Toyota 3TC block. We put custom main caps, which is what holds the crankshaft in place to support the block because the factory main caps can't do it. So to get a little bit more performance out of it, we go with the custom crankshaft, which is actually billet chromoly. And uh, I may have heard from Ricky that it's a very expensive piece of oh, metal. Oh yeah. Well, the way things are now, prices, they basically have doubled in price. It's not like it used to be, you know, things were pretty affordable. We actually built these back in about 2001. That's how old this crankshaft is, but it's such a quality piece as long as you don't damage anything in the motor that could damage the crankshaft, it'll probably last, it'll outlive the engine by far. This is actually the, a brand new motor we just put together because we damaged the last block. And then uh, this is also a billet piece? Correct. The yes. head, the so entire head. The entire head is CNC'd from a chunk of aluminum because that would be the weak link. That would be your first weak link when it comes to a 3TC. The heads aren't very strong. You could make pretty much the same power as far as porting and valve size, but they just fatigue too much. So then the design of it, once you do make it out mm -hmm. of one piece of billet aluminum, is it similar or do you modify it? It's 100% factory stock. So everything falls in the same exact location, which is good. Um, for drag racing, you could have made changes to it, but then it wouldn't fit everybody's application. So to sell more of them, they basically just reproduce the factory part, just billet got it you know interesting okay yeah. so then did you have to modify the block at all like did you have to like do closed deck or i don't know oh yeah the block is actually full of cement so we use uh an automotive style cement that we use oh. and we eliminate all the water passages inside of the block and we fill it full of cement got it because yeah. there's still a way for it to be Cooled or, oh we, no, we, this we, is only. We leave a little, probably about an inch and a half from the top of the deck, I leave so I can run water through it to go through. So basically the water runs through here yeah. and there's a portion of the block that's about this tall, goes through and then it exits out the back of the head and goes back into the water tank that's in the car. So right. we don't run a radiator also. It's just cold water yep. or ice water and yep. then it, it's enough to keep it cool for the run. Correct. Or yes. the, the burnout and leading up right. to the run yep. and then the run and then and that's, that's it. it. Turn it off and let it start its process of cooling down. Got it. So this is, could not be further from a street car. Like this is a full on yeah, race full car. Yeah, full on drag. I mean, if you want to get that little extra edge to make more power and be reliable, these are things you have to do. Yeah. You know? Okay. Wow, that is so cool. All right, so yeah. then what else? What about like the intake manifold and this? So this intake setup? manifolds, I used to actually make these pieces. You can see they're all cast. Mm -hmm. I had a company that used to cast them for me out of Columbia. Wow. And uh, so they would make them down there. Again, this is very, very old. This is back in 2002, 2003, and it's still around till today. But it's all new old stock stuff that you're using to build no, this motor? this motor actually came out of a friend of ours car that was based out of Oahu. And then uh, he sold Billy kind of the combination 
and then we just went through it all and refurbished parts and stuff like that. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So then, um, and then you guys made this in house too. Yep. 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 So we put the uh, custom plenum box on it. You know, bigger throttle body. Um, and then is this like out of another, like the mechanism is out of something the else? The throttle or? body we use, they use, a lot of cars use a baseline of a Ford, Ford Mustang. So like the 86, I believe through 91 Mustang is a very popular throttle body that everybody just bolts to different applications. That's what that is. Oh. And then yeah. what about fuel? What Fuel, it runs a VPX 98 ethanol. So it's 98% ethanol, which helps in the cooling as far as keeping the motor cool as well. It has a lot of cooling properties to it. So since the motor is fully cemented or mostly, the fuel helps to keep the engine cool as well. Plus it creates power by having those cooling properties. And how much fuel are you running through it with one pass, you think? Uh, it's actually pretty good on fuel, to be honest with you, since it's not the most efficient motor, you know, we might use maybe half a gallon, mm -hmm. you know, per run. And then this is a water to air? Yep, water to air intercooler. So again, this, this shares the water that keeps the engine cool. But what we do is a lot of guys think we'll actually run ice water through and we don't do that because the motor's not gonna want freezing cold water, you know? So I have a valve that I regulate inside the car that basically works kind of like a thermostat. So I slow down the flow so the water can build up some heat but still pass and keep the engine cool but it doesn't get a shock of cold water, you know? But the intercooler itself is free as far as returning back to the water tank, so we want this as cold as possible. Got it, got Get it? it, okay. At, Same tank, but this is free flow, yep. as much water as, as you can get through it. As much cold water as you can and get through it. And then the engine, it's like a slower trickle. Right, yeah. I mean a very small trickle, just you'll see it just, you know, a little bit more than a drip, it'll be a right. little steady stream, but very tiny. And then what tank is this? That's the fuel tank. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So in drag cars, you kind of want to, if you have the space, you want to bring all, all the weight you can up front. In a perfect world, you'd like like a 50-50 balance. And this helps to allow that. You don't want any weight really on the rear because you got the battery back there, which is heavy, you know, and the big rear end, stuff like that. It's just so cool. It looks so different because there's no accessories or any yep. belts it or looks anything clean, like yeah. that. It's very clean. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we try and you know incorporate that it looks good as well. You know, That's so cool. So then what about the business side, the turbo side? Okay, so we just built this. This is actually brand new. Uh, we have not raced the car with this setup. Um, we're trying something new as far as turbocharger and header. And uh, it's actually from a new company called HPT Turbo. And I'm sure you're familiar with Precision Turbo. Mm -hmm. Well, Harry, who used to work for Precision, uh, started his own company again. He left Precision and he started building turbochargers and this is what this is. HPT stands for High Performance Turbocharger. This is so awesome. So you guys actually build this one then? Yep. You guys done? Yeah, I do all the, all the fab work and everything. So when we ran the car last time, it actually had a smaller tube on the header. So we're trying something different and we went to a bigger tube to see how it performs. Amazing. Yep. And then so... Um, with this setup, how much did this dyno at? Uh, we're hoping to make in the area of about 750. That's the goal. And then you're actually going to dyno it today. Yes. yes. But why do you actually need to dyno it here on the island? Well, it's a whole new combination. And again, since we did build a brand new header, new turbo combination, new intercooler, all this is brand new to the car. When we ran the car, uh, we were here Labor Day last year. It went 845 with the air to water, I'm sorry, air to air, different header, smaller turbo. So now we're trying to see how much more power we gain. Got it. So originally this whole car with the engine, everything was built in Florida at your shop at PSI Racing. Correct. And then you shipped it here to Big Island. It didn't even make it to uh, Oahu. And then yep. you built a motor and then ship that here No, no, too? I built, the car was running. I dynoed it in Florida. Right. It was turnkey, yeah. drove it, ready to go. But then this one is rebuilt. Did you right. rebuild it here or did you no, rebuild it? No, they sent me the motor back to Florida. Uh, yeah, so Ricky pulled the motor out, did all the leg work since I'm not here. Got it. Uh, ship it back to me, build the motor, ship it back, they put it in. Amazing. It really is a team effort here. Oh, it's, it's, and it's crazy how far apart we are, you know. <laughs> this is just so cool. I love that. So I actually cannot wait 
to see this strapped up on the dyno. And I'm curious to see if you guys are gonna make more power then. Huh? Yeah, we're gonna try. We're gonna see what we get out of it. I mean, it definitely should. Last time we, we actually had a spare engine in the car. I was here in February and we were just testing out all the changes we did with another motor and it showed potential, you know. All right, so let's talk about the rest of the vehicle. Yep. Um, a lot of it is metal, but like the hood, I'm guessing that's fiberglass. Hood is the only thing that's fiberglass on the car. Everything else is 100% factory. And then what about the Other glass? Other than the windows, yes. Oh, these are all Lexan? Everything is Lexan, yeah, yeah. It's better for safety as well. You yes, know? you also save some weight there. Of course, yeah. Uh, yeah. Did you have a chance to weigh this? Uh, yes, I weighed it in Florida. So I scaled the car to make sure all the weights are the way I want them. Uh, I weighed about 2160 with me in it. And that's full cage, everything? Running fuel, everything. This is so crazy. So did you guys build this stuff? Did you guys build the wing? That was actually, again, when we purchased the vehicle, the way you see the car painted, windows, that was all there already. Oh, okay. Yeah. And tubbing and everything, that was already there that too? That was already there, yep. Why is it that the tubs are so much bigger than what you actually need? Uh, that was the chassis builder. I wish they would have went actually wider. So we could have put a bigger tire. You can't really put a bigger tire than what's on the car now. Regardless, it doesn't hurt to have the height because like in the burnout, the tire's gonna grow. Got it. You know? Yeah, so if you'll see it, if, if you were here, you yeah, would see the tire get, just like a top fuel or yep. anything, gets real skinny and, you know, so this allows it not to touch. I and see. And just makes things better. So legitimately, this is the biggest you can run. Yeah. Uh, and you couldn't really modify this to go wide body because the problem is there's not enough room in the actual tub. Huh? On the inside. On so the inside. when you build a car like this, the way we normally build the car is I'll basically bring the chassis guy, hey, I got a 15 by 14 wheel, make it fit, you know? Mm -hmm. So what you have to do is take the frame rails, which are where these tubes are running mm -hmm. on this, this down bar right here. Got it. And you would bring them in. You know? I see, I see. And then you could get a bigger tire in the car. This is the biggest you can fit on. Which here. is good. That's still yeah. a good tire. I mean, I'm sure it's it's quite the handful to drive. This, yeah, yeah, it's huh? definitely. Because not only are you the builder, you're also the driver. Correct. The owner doesn't actually drive it, but the owner enjoys racing against you, watching you drive. Well, I'll be honest, you know, all my life I've driven cars, but I don't get to see what they get to see. You know, I, I don't get to see the car take off and launch and the burnout. I'm stuck inside of the thing, so. Even when we race back in Florida, you know, we won a couple races and the crowd goes crazy. I don't see that. You know, I'm down at the end of the track waiting for guys to come and pick me up, you know, and I'm just sitting there yeah. and well, they're at the party. Or you know? sometimes they're <laughs> celebrating because you won and you have no idea what happened. I have happened. no idea, yeah. yeah, you know, so I'm like, yeah. hey, what's up guys, how do yeah. we run, you know, and I'm just sitting there twirling my thumb. So right. it's got its perks either way, you know. And then of course, because this is going, the tra what's the track speed up? Of this. Uh, last time we ran about 154, I believe. 154 in this. Yeah. That was probably when it came from the factory, the top speed was 75 <laughs> miles an hour, 80 probably, miles an yeah. hour. Yeah. yeah. We're hoping now to run in like the mid 160s. That's, that's, if all works out well, that's, that's the plan. And then what's your target time wise? Uh, we're trying to break the eight second barrier. So we go 799.99. Seven. That's, that's our goal. Wow. Yeah. That's our ultimate goal. And then, so when you're actually on the drag strip, you have to run wheelie bars because this is probably oh, yeah. going to, yeah. this would do like a bumper stand. Oh, huh? it'll totally stand up. Yeah, you have to have a wheelie bars on it. Huh. Yeah. Already, because some of the big island street legal vehicles that I, I've been featuring, you see the way they wheelie. Oh yeah, some of them like- The way they car. land, it's yep. violent. You know what? It destroys the front of the car. That's the problem. You don't want it to do that. You know. Mm. I know it might look cool for a picture, but in reality, it's not what you You're want. You're also losing time. Yes. Yeah. yes. So the ultimate goal in drag racing is to get the car out. You don't really want it to spend a lot of time squatting the rear or lifting the front. You want the car to move out. Hmm. So still metal. Yep. Factory door interior. handles. Factory door. Yep. Um, there is so much going on in here in terms of safety and everything. So then. What kind of transmission does this have? This is a G-Force five-speed, clutchless five-speed. And then so you what the gear clutch? do you actually get up to? When fifth you're... gear. Oh, fifth it, gear, it, yeah. Fifth oh. gear would be your fourth gear in like a standard transmission. So fifth gear is your one-to-one -one ratio. And then 
for launching, is there some kind of like electronic helper for you to launch this? Or you, you just, just basically line lock the car so it doesn't roll. Once you stage the vehicle, I'll pump the brake one time as I'm on the line lock, just so when I go to two-step the car, we'll launch the car at about 7,800 RPM, about 25 pounds of boost. So when the motor get, gets up there, it's making that kind of power. It wants to kind of roll the car, so we use the line lock to stop it. And that's it. You just pedal the car and let King hold on and start shifting. And then this is the water tank. That's the water tank, correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. And the cage, this was already, yep. like, existed when you bought it. So correct. it was already a drag car. Yep, but it's all spec to what it needs to be. So you can see over there, there's a chassis certification. Uh huh. <clears throat> so we have to have that to make sure the chassis is legal to run as fast as you want to run. So right now, this chassis, I believe, is certified to either 750 or, uh, or maybe into the sixes. Huh. But you have to have that. And then this is basically just the rear end service panel. Right. That's, that's basically what they cut out from the car that is not original. So everything back there is what's fabbed up as far as then you put your tin work and stuff like that, and it just covers all the suspension and everything else. But everything else, I mean, you can see it's all factory floor. So then... You guys didn't have to build like another tube or some shielding here for the drive shaft or anything? No, there's this tube that's here just in case, God forbid, it breaks this front U joint. This will stop it. But for the most part, yeah, this is strong enough to kind of hold it down if something were to break. Huh. And then you replace the factory dash with yep. like a little... Custom little tin dash. Yeah. It's got a, you know, a Haltech digital dash there that we use. See that power up, which is pretty cool. And it's got a series of shift lights and everything up here that you, you program to what you want it to. Uh-huh. So, so it, what does it rev out to then? Uh, this particular motor will rev close to 9,500. Wow. Which, which is pretty good considering factory was 6,200. <laughs> so it yeah. screams. So the 3TC factory made how much power? Like 90 horsepower? I want to say 80 horsepower. 80 horsepower. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's so much love for this motor, it's crazy. And the problem now is it's getting really, really hard to find parts. You know, so you have to find blocks and things like that and you can't find them like you used to. Yeah. So then this is all your electrical stuff yep. here. So I built that little control panel there. Kind of make it easily accessible, you know, if you need to work on it or look for a problem. So I just basically just put that right there on the floor. Mm. I didn't want to hide, hide anything or, you know, make it impossible to get to. So the reason why this is here is because the owner is from Oahu, he's Hawaiian, yep. and he wants to see a race here on Big Island. What's the draw? Because I'm assuming that there's potentially a lot faster tracks on the mainland. Yes, the tracks like where we're at in Florida between Bradenton and Orlando, those are top tier tracks, you know. But these guys have a lot of heart and they really want to pour their heart and soul into making the track better. You know, one of the issues they have is they don't get all the spectators like we get back home. So they don't get all the money to fund the track as well, you know, but they're doing, but I, I was a little skeptical when I came originally to drive the car because I'm so used to driving where I do drive and I know it's safe. So number one for me is safety as well, you know, but when I started to talk to the guys and, you know, see the kind of cars they have, like these guys are really, they're, they're trying to do the best they can with what they have. So yeah, and this is a theme that I've been talking about in all the videos that I've been doing here on Big Island. It's incredible to me with a population of between 180 to 200,000, depending on the time of the year, it can sustain a drag strip. Right, right. I think that is so cool. Yeah, yeah, which is tricky for them because they, it does cost money to run an event. You know, yeah. we have to, they have to spray compound on the track to make the track sticky. You know, they have a they have a specific it's kinda like a like a tractor that has slicks bolted to the back of it, a rotator they call it, they drag that down. All that stuff's expensive. And this also is interesting in that um because there's no drag strip on the most populous island uh, of Oahu, yeah. uh, a lot of the people that are into drag racing on the other islands, they have to come here. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we have, I mean, I've been pushing it on my Instagram page and my YouTube page and telling people, hey, we're coming May, we're coming May. You know, we've been pushing because I want to help them out as well, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm committed to them so they can get, you know, we probably have 60 people, 70 people coming from all the islands 
just for this race. Wow, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, plus, you know, Billy brought me, my wife, my kid, you know, so it's, yeah. it's, it's a good time, you know. Huh. Well, I can't wait to see it. Hopefully you break into the sevens. Oh, we're going to try. Have that's you ever you. had a race car that's gone faster? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Before this, I used to race a little uh, 82 Toyota Starlet. And uh, what, is, what was your fastest pass on that? We went 695 at 204 in that. That is <laughs> 200 miles an hour. 204. It went 167 in the eighth of a mile. It went 460 or 440 at 167 half track. So then uh, you, and this is a question that I've had for some drag racers, when it's 204 trap speed, that potentially could mean that you're actually going faster before you hit the chute, right? Yeah. Because you're still on gas pass. Oh yeah, yeah. One of the hardest things that people don't understand is you want to get to, your, to, the, to the end of the track, you know, you want to make it to the quarter mile, but you need to stop as well. So a little Toyota like that going 204, 205, it's hard to stop the car. So believe it or not, I'd probably be, I'd probably be 100 feet away from the quarter mile and I'm already throwing the parachute. So one of my biggest issues that I would have is you would literally see the chute come out and I'd probably be like 10 feet before the trap. Really? <laughs> that was one of my biggest problems, but I'm like, man, I want to stop this car yeah. and I want to stop it now. Right, know? right. Because if you lose the chute and you don't get the chute at that speed, you might not make it. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you the truth. And then this track, Luckily, it's a pretty long yeah. stopping distance. Yeah, the shutdown here is pretty good. Even though I still throw the chute on this, it's just good practice. Yeah, you know? in case you do lose. Right. Breaks God forbid whatever. something happens and you take it for granted. So if I have the chute, why not use it? You yeah, know? yeah. So yeah. I throw it regardless. Oh. On every pass. So you know? cool. Well, thank you so much for showing us this build. Hey, I this is just so cool. I love this so much. I'm glad. I it love that out. you're just going. I wouldn't say you're going against the grain, but you're just doing it. Uh, almost just for just the culture aspect of it. Yep. Yo, he right? even asked me, like, Chase, who owns the shop where we're going to dyno? He's like, are you guys going to run exhibition or are you going to try and enter a race? And I said, no, we'll probably just run exhibition. And they love it because we're here basically just for the show, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And people come from the islands just to see this. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to support us directly, go to LarryChenPrints.com. I print and sign every single one of these. This is the perfect gift or it's the perfect piece of art for your wall.